Now, some people think uh, there's this idea that, that Jesus, you know, he didn't really come to, to start churches to introduce this kind of new me and God and alone type of religion thing. But that's actually totally to the contrary. Jesus, he was all about church. Jesus loved the church. He went regularly and meant for it to be fulfilled. For it to be fulfilled. That's the word that he uses in verse 21. Jesus means for the church to be all that God intended it to be. For it to be fulfilled, filling its purpose, and for it to be full of people. That's Jesus' vision for his church. Now, at this point uh, in, in the story, Jesus has identified himself as a, a rabbi, uh, and because of that, he's given the opportunity to be the guest preacher for the day at church. Uh, and he picks this passage from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, which this is just what good preachers ought to do. They ought to preach from the Bible. And that's what we see Jesus doing. He picks out a passage, like we've got a passage today, and then he speaks about it and preaches from it. And the passage he pre preaches from, it talks about this, this certain person whom God would send to proclaim or to preach good news. This message of good news. This good news to poor, to captives, to the blind, to the oppressed, and that, that through him and his message that God's favor would be extended to people. It would tell of the Lord's favor. Now everybody's there. They're a little bit taken aback by, by this. Verse 20 says, everybody's eyes, they're fixed on him. He got their attention with this. Now after reading it and talking about it, this passage, Jesus says in verse 21, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That was a big statement. By, by saying that, he's saying, I'm the person that this passage is talking about. I fulfill this. I am the Lord's anointed. <laughs> I, I am going to preach good news to the poor. I'm going to open blind eyes. I'm going to release the captives and the oppressed through me. God will extend his favor. That was a big statement. Of Jesus. The church leaders there, the, the pastors of the day, their, their reaction to him, it isn't very good. Uh, verse 22 is basically they're flattering him, mockingly giving him false praise. Their, their facetiousness is really revealed when they say, is this not Joseph's son? Isn't this Joseph's son? Now, if you were here last week, then uh, you, you might remember how we talked about uh, a bunch of, uh, some one of Luke's themes and purposes in his, throughout his book is to show us and to tell us how Jesus is the Son of God, the unique divine Son of God. He shows it to us in Jesus' birth narrative and all the miraculous things that take place there. In Jesus' baptism where there's this voice of the Father saying he's the Son. We saw it in his genealogy and his family tree, tracing it back to him being the Son of God. And then we saw it last week where Jesus is tempted by the devil in the wilderness. And twice, the way that the devil goes about tempting Jesus by saying, if you are the Son of God, then do this, do this. So in response to these pastors of the day, Jesus, first he aligns himself with this group of prophets in the Bible who, who turned out to be really sent from God, but the pastors of their day didn't believe that they were and actually had them put to death. A lot of prophets that church leaders killed in the Old Testament. And then he, Jesus tells two stories, one about a poor widow and then one about this guy with leprosy. Uh, and in the stories with these two different prophets, Elijah and Elisha, who ended up ministering to him, and the kicker is that neither the widow nor the leper are Jews, <laughs> like these pastors of these, this church that Jesus is at were. <laughs> so, Jesus' not so subtle accusation toward them is this, that, look, you pastors of this church, you don't really know and love God, uh, you're, you're actually serving the devil, and that you are racist men who really only care about yourselves and your position and power. Uh, his charge is that if they were really of God, then they would recognize Jesus as God's son and embrace him and, and welcome him. <laughs> 
And that they would recognize that he is God's anointed to minister to the poor, to the captives, to the blind, to the oppressed, and to extend God's favor. And not just to Jews, but to all kinds of people of all races. Instead of thinking that they were better than everyone else because of their race and their blood. Jesus' charge against them is really serious. And they get it. They They pick up on the magnitude of what Jesus is accusing them of. And they get furious. They get so mad that they drag him out of the town and attempt to kill him. Kind of funny. Jesus' first recorded activity in his life and ministry almost gets him killed. (laughs) Think that's a picture of what's about to come in Jesus' life? It is. That's where it ends up. But we'll celebrate in a few weeks. It just wasn't his time. Yeah, and so he just kind of mysteriously slips away somehow. That's scene one. It kind of makes it a little bit scary to be a pastor, uh, considering what goes down here. But on the other hand, not really, because what Jesus does is he makes it really clear what he, his church is supposed to be about and what his, he, the pastors are supposed to be like. They're supposed to be pastors who recognize who Jesus is and they make all their lives about making much of him and pointing to to Jesus as God's anointed who gives good news. And what they do is they minister to people by taking care of both the physically and the spiritually poor, blind, captive, and oppressed. 